Hi, good evening, and welcome to the Select Board, the Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting for December 4th, 2019. Um, it's about 6.05 p.m. at the Deerfield Municipal Office's main meeting room in 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. Um, I hope everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving with their friends and, um, and family, and everyone survived the snowstorm. I wanted to thank our um, all our public, you know, uh, police and EMS and, and especially DPW for doing such a great job clearing out for us. Um, there's still a lot, if you can see the town common, it's, um, it's just a massive iceberg out there of snow that we'll hopefully be scooping up in the next few days and getting out of the way. But um, Kevin and all, all the guys and the contractors did a great job clearing us out. So um, still a lot of work to do, but. I just really want to say we are, our normal precipitation is about 49 inches and we received 20 almost 20 Did you? Wow. yeah so you know this is quite a bit of our annual snowfall yes so thank you Kevin it can end now mm -hmm. yeah yep. <laughs> I just, um, I'm not ready for this you myself. know I know some residents are concerned at the condition of the streets mm -hmm. right during the storm yeah. but people also have to realize Deerfield is kind of unique in a way that we actually have 96 miles of paved highway, excluding I-91, in this town, uh, where most towns around us, other than Conway, are about 30 to 40 miles of paved wow. road. So we have a lot more that we have to try to keep on top of. And, and considering, you know, with 96 miles, that means you've got to go both ways. So, you know, that's almost 200 miles of travel for, and they try to keep on top of it. and. It's a difficult task, especially when it snows for two days. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't even keep up with my sidewalks. <laughs> no, that was the, the hard part. It was just <laughs> the long gross. duration, and they were trying to, yep. you know, wait for so much to get on the ground before they could get out again. They pre-treated early and stuff. But I think they all around they did a good job, and, you know, um, it's freezing up, so it's going to be a little slick out there. Be careful. Hmm. Um, so we just have a couple of quick um, announcements. Um, lighting on the town common would be uh, this Friday. December 6th, um, between 6 and 7 p.m. So I think we're hoping to get some of that snow cleared away um, so that we can, we can do that. But there'll be, um, there'll be live music, joyful singing, um, hot chocolate, cookies, um, lighting of the trees, um, and, and welcome the commons. Winter deer will be arriving. So it's open to all. Everyone's welcome. So um, it's a, a community program put on by the South Deerfield Women's Club. So please come and join us for that really nice celebration. Um, and then also, uh, let's see, I think there was another, oh, another thing was just, you know, uh, join your neighbors and decorate your residence and businesses with lighted decorative deer. Um, a lot of people have been adding over the last few years. It was a great idea to kind of get this going by the, the women's club. So um, please continue to do that. Let's light up with some deer, so that'd be great. The other item uh, we just wanted to talk about, I know it's a little, little early, but um, would be to, um, the town hall would be closing at noon on Christmas Eve which is Tuesday, December 24th. So if you have any business you know, to do in town hall, you just come in in the morning hours if you can. Um, we're hoping all the employees and everybody go home and enjoy their family. Also sign up for the emergency system. Please, great. Yeah. Yes, thank you for, for mentioning that. We're still trying to get everybody signed up on the RAVE, um, yep. which is a, you know our emergency alert system that would go out in case of an emergency or any kind of information. So. Uh, please come in, and um, I did hear from one person that was having trouble kind of um, getting on, and I'm drawing a blank on a, on a specific request, but if you have any issues, and a lot of people don't, you know, they don't want to sign up for another thing and have another password and another account and all, but um, or it might be difficult. Um, this is, uh, you know, of all your things, I'm sure banking is important and all of that, but of all the things that you could sign up for and get a password, we really encourage you to get one for this because it's you know it, it's um, it's emergency and it's safety measures for for residents and, in the and town. And it's just not weather related. I mean, it could be a train derailment, it could be a road closure because of um, you know a traffic accident. So you know you get alerted of rerouting of traffic or evacuation notice and. I mean, it is actually really serious. It's the only way, if we had um, a, a train derailment, like a tanker mm -hmm. that had, um, you know, hazardous stuff, and this is the only way we could get people notified in the neighborhood. And in so a hurry. In a hurry. 
and so it is. It's really, really important. There's other, you know, and a lot of residents may not have a computer. They may not have an email or a password or any of that stuff. So um, we understand those challenges. Please bring them to us. Come and, you know, see me if, if, you, if you need some help signing up. I'll figure out what I can do to help you get an alert whichever way is most advantageous to you. Um, I think that was one of the notes that a gentleman had mentioned that there was no spot there to like contact for somebody if they needed help. So maybe, I don't know if there is or not, I might be speaking out of turn, but he didn't see it right away. So maybe if we can figure well, out a way it, to have a or contact if you person. Know, right, and if, or if you know someone that, um, say they're deaf or mm -hmm. whatever, have some kind of um, disability, then we need, we'll help. Yeah, we need to know that so that we can work, work with them. Yeah. I, I was just going to say, I think as part of our um, our grant implementation for MVP that we're working on that rave, uh, like you're talking about signing yes. up. So we'll be sending out um, in the coming months mailings directly to people about how to sign up, right. um, what you know, what they're signing up for, the emergency alerts, but all the, also some of the general alerts. So we'll be uh, we'll be doing active registering of uh, for rave participants, Great. and I think maybe even we're discussing. Um, you know, doing locations where we would people could come and we could assist them with that signing would be great. up as I well, think like that's at the senior center and yes. things like that. Yes, contact so. number for somebody to help. That'd be great. And then also the 2020. I just want to say this every time if I can. 2020 census is coming out soon, so please keep an eye out for that. Sign up. Make sure that um, everybody is registered because that's how we get our funding for all kinds of things for 20 years. So it's it's very important to get people signed up. For that as well. Um, did you have a tick update you wanted to hit? Oh on yes. Else you wanted to um, um, I just wanted. Uh, we had an all day before Thanksgiving um, that Monday. We had an all day tick symposium at UMass, and it's it it's brings forward all the information that they've been collecting um, uh, across the state and, and really all New England because they take they test ticks for other states too. Okay. Um, but uh, there is a new tick. It looks like the long, uh, Lone Star tick. It just has a different biting mechanism. It's called the Asian Longhorn uh, tick, and we will have a sample of it Dick, in Dick's office if people want to look at it. There is not enough testing on it done to know really what the diseases they're carrying, because this is really critical to know what your tick is to determine what diseases you are potentially exposed to. So that is a new thing. Um, it's, so you know your tick, um, but of the ticks that have been tested, consistently we're between 36 and 40 percent of the ticks have Lyme disease. Um, babylosis is up 6.62 percent um, of all the ticks. Um, Anamoposis is 5.5 percent. Um, and um, Borrelia is 2%, and just under a third of a percent is Powassum. So it is, what the trend here is, is those secondary co-infections are increasing, which we, what has been consistent with all the ticks that have been tested in Deerfield is just under 10% cumulatively. So it's important to take the tick test. We were successful getting another CDC grant to subsidize our tick testing. So the tick testing that's been done is, is being paid for by the CDC. Our money is in reserve for the spring. So um, we will still have the ability to pay for some tick testing in the spring through our town allocation. One of the things that um, also emerged is that the the group that seems to be most at risk and has had the highest percentage increase is ages 5 to 14. Mm -hmm. And what it is is the kids are outside and they, mm -hmm. you just need to do tick checks. So um, doing tick checks seems to be um, the, the most preventative way to protect your children. Um, the other thing that um, I learned was that DEET only lasts about 30 minutes. So if you want to keep spraying yourself every 30 minutes, use DEET. But if you really want to have um, a good barrier and a good protection, is per Promethium is the way to go. And you, like I said, you can buy it in a cheap version 
um, the Bronco horse spray. You spray your pant legs, you spray your socks and your shoes, and that's really where the ticks are gonna jump on you when you brush by them. Um, so you can treat your yard with perithium. That's the most proactive thing to do. Know when the ticks are active. It's in the spring, in April, May time, and then here in October and November. Um, they have not died. They are just under the leaf litter, so we have all the snow, and chances are you're not going to get exposed to a tick and pick up a tick because they're all under the leaf litter, which is under the snow. But you still should make a habit of just checking in general. Um, protect uh, and, and check your pets. One of the biggest ways um, that we're finding that um, ticks get into people's homes and then jump on you is, f you know, from your furniture or your rugs is because your animals are bringing them in. So do tick checks on your pets as well. And then, again, your clothes, spraying your clothes with permarathon, it seems to be the most, pr most productive. And that you know, basically, if anyone has any questions, I have a huge packet of information. But those are the general high points um, and that we've been talking about um, in general. Uh, it was reaffirmed again. Great. Thank you. Anything you want to add? or No. Nope. Okay. I'm so um, we have new minutes tonight and, um, you know, scheduled hearings and appearances. Fairly quick meeting, um, we think. So... Um, Old business, we've had these items on here for a little bit, and I just wanted to discuss them a little bit, was the assistant town administrator hiring next steps and town administrator hiring next steps. And I think the consensus, from what I understand, is that we want to hire a town administrator before we move forward for, with the assistant town administrator. And I know some applications have come in, and I would like to make a motion to um, create a committee to look at those you need to, you know we're going to have to do a steering committee on that well um dave actually dave and john have um reviewed them um well there's going to need to be a committee to do that to doesn't have them. to be a committee no it doesn't have to be i think that's what lisa said well so either that or you've got to interview every one of them in public so um we're going to need to address that yeah sure. so i'm going to make that motion and you guys could knock it down or you guys could not well, do anything Well, Lisa was supposed to call me back. She had, she didn't get in touch with me. I well, called I her yesterday. I spoke with her today. Oh, you did? So, and she said you need a steering committee or you have to interview everybody in public. Oh, okay. So I would just, I'll make that motion and if you decide that we don't need it or you think you don't, you know, however that goes, but I think we're here today. Oh, okay. Well, let's then, just no, well, let's then make the motion it, that right? uh, don't, Dave and... John. Of course, Dave and, and, and the steering committee yep. set up to look at that. Yeah. Because okay. right. two of us can't be on that steering committee. No, no, no. Dave and Dave has already done the okay. work. Okay, so I make so. the motion to set up a steering committee to review the applications and then um, put them forward to uh, several forward to us, and that can be determined three or two or however you want to do that for an open um, public interview process um, as you see fit whenever you. You know, I'm not sure when you'll get that done, but whenever, you know, in the next, you know, couple months or month or however you yep. have time for doing that. Um, and then report that out to us, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I okay. Just, well, uh, I think uh, let's keep the motion to appoint the committee and then. Correct. And then let the committee decide. When, when it's coming, coming up for time yeah. frame. Okay. Yeah. And keep us in the loop. All right. So I made that motion. I have a second? So, uh, I'll second that. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? No. Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. So Dave and John and they can mm -hmm. work on that. Okay. Um, I know John, you need to, um, John's not gonna be here next week. So you yeah, have he's to, on vacation. So, yeah, so yeah. you have to today. sort that okay. out. Okay. And then under new business, we have appoint a part-time police officer until June 30th. 2020, you, you had, you know, on that, it was, um, uh, Ethan Klaus, Ethan, Ethan Kraus, and that would be a special police officer and assistant dog officer, uh, for the term beginning December 4th, 2019, ending June 30th, 2020. I make that motion. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I did talk to John a little bit, just for a side note. To oh, good. The uh, recommend that 
he might start looking for some little bit older candidates. Okay. Because of the fact that we're potentially losing three to the Mass State Police in January. Yeah. Uh, we lost one to the Secret Service. Uh, you know. We're doing a good job training that. We're doing an <laughs> excellent job training. Uh, it's just that, you know, we've... It's tough. You're getting a lot of turnover. And yes, it's, uh, I know he's going to be short for a while. Yeah. You know, that was, you've been talking about for a while that we need to kind of backfill the part times. Well, yeah. he sort of knew, yeah. I mean, yep. he knows. Yeah. Okay. You want this, Diana? Um, yeah, thank you. So there's a disclosure of appearance of conflict of interest for uh, Tim Hilchey on the Conservation Commission, will be the next item. Um, let me look in here if I have that. Okay. So um, is this something I would read aloud? Or just accept? No, we just accept it. Okay. And I think this is for the Conservation Commission, right? Yes. So, it's yep. the Conservation Commission related to Dollar General. Yep. Okay. So he's specifically just, just Dollar General. Yep. Yeah. Okay. He's just submitting it to us. To make sure that so we're aware. It's part of the public record. Okay, good. I mean, so. he already filed it with the town clerk, but All this right, is so. just a... Motion to entertain that. T you want to? Yeah, I want to. Oh, I just want to clarify. So this actually for the appearance of just uh, disclosure of appearance that gets filed with the appointing authority. So that's, that's you. Yes, that's so what I was thinking. It hasn't been filed with the town clerk. You actually accept it as the appointing authority. And I would make a motion to accept that um, disclosure of appearance of conflict of interest for Tim Hilchey on the Conservation Commission as it relates to the Dollar General. I thought he did. He already did file it with the town clerk. I talked to Barbara today, and she said she didn't accept I these ones because this the is the appointing authority. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, so then we pass it to her. Okay. Yes, we yeah. would turn we it in. So for, okay. for record, give her a copy. yep, yep. Yeah. give her a copy. So, um, do I have a second on that? No yes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, and then uh, request for appointment to the Conservation Commission. This is for uh, for Peter Law. And uh, Peter had sent us an email and into the town. Um, I think I would just read uh, his letter. And so this was received November 25th um, the, to the Deerfield Select Board, um, are we the Conservation Commission? Dear Select Board members, I am writing to inquire about a potential vacancy on the Conservation Commission and to express my interest in serving on this team, if a vacancy does indeed exist, uh, my wife and I have lived in Deerfield for over 30 years. I've enjoyed raising our family here and plan on being Deerfield residents for many years to come. At this jun juncture in my life, I would like to have the opportunity to serve on this commission as I have um, such an interest in not only the future of Deerfield, but the quality of the natural resources and environment we uh, so rely on. I've attached a brief resume of my professional career for your review. My educational degree is from the University of Massachusetts where I'm majored in environmental sciences with a concentration in uh, aquatic biology. Uh, since I graduated from UMass, I've been fortunate to have been able to work in the environmental field, primarily in the areas of chemical, biological, and radiological um, analytical sciences. Uh, my experience includes technical and regulatory expertise for a variety of private and governmental entities, including a wide array of federal, state, and local agencies. I am well versed in technical and regulatory document reviews and the interpretation thereof. If there's an upcoming um, opening on the Conservation Commission, and if my background, experience, and education are of interest to you, I'd certainly be available to meet with the select board and members of the Conservation Commission to discuss future opportunities. I did forward this to one of the members who had requested some info on this. Um, I think it's a Oh man, we were lo really lucky. It seems really good. And we had a vacancy, right? Because there was a, a res resignation. Resignation. Yes. Yep. yep. And that has happened. Um, so he does have a lot of experience and it seems like it would be a great fit for that. Yeah, for that well, board and for that position. Yeah. yeah, bring some technical. I expertise. make a motion that we appoint um, Peter Law and thank him very much for stepping yeah. forward. Yeah, that's wonderful. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. I've got one here to sign too. Oh, okay. Yep. You got. Oh, you got a sign one. Yeah, I got one oh, here. If you need. You got yep. One already going. I didn't realize you already had one. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. That's great. Um, So uh, the next item is to issue the 20, 
1920 and 21 sewer commitment. Oh, uh, 1920. Excuse me. It's going to be a while before I catch this. 2020. <laughs> <laughs> the 2020 uh, commitment number one for our, uh, our sewer, our utility billing. Um, so as you are hereby authorized to collect from the 400, uh, 914 bills named on the commitment with the amount set against their respective names amounting in the aggregate of $679,952.11 um, to pay over all monies as soon as collected to the town treasurer and to make a report of such payment to the town accountant. So we have... Um, we had set the rate. So yep. This is Rates. the, just this is the, the first amount. Okay. Yep. In the amount of six hundred seventy-nine thousand. All right. Times fifty-two, and we also have abatements to look at here. Um, and I assume this is for after or. Yeah. So the abate. These are the because it's a winter. It was a winter. These are the summer. Um, right. We have abatements for the summer, uh, because they were you know you can't. We can't charge any more than 125% of what your win last winter's usage was. We have a whole list of abatements for a variety of customers that are in that range. And I think it's totaling $69,421.23. So I'd make a motion to sign this commitment, number one. Uh, I make that, uh, second that. Any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And then we should also do those. Um, yeah, I was just looking at them. Yep, go ahead. Sorry, I, I didn't see them. Just wanted to. They look. They look. Nor this looks mm -hmm. uh, pretty standard. I don't see anything out of line yet. And these were, you know, some people don't get an abatement because they're. They didn't use, you know, they conserved water and didn't use. Um, yeah, the water. You know, more than 125%. It's just like if you're watering your lawn mm -hmm. or something like that. Yep. Washing the car, filling the swimming pool, that kind of thing. Okay. All right. Dave might want to look at them. Yep. Sure. So I'll let you look at that before we sign. Um, oh, this. Okay, so. Um, these are only for residences, mm -hmm. not for like companies. Um, I had gotten an email uh, from Alana, the um, Joe Cumber. I back to her tonight. Oh, did you? I did about did the DOT meeting. Yeah. Yes. So did you have the give her a priority list? I, I did. I, oh, you did. Okay. I did. So, um, she, uh, so Joe Comerford's, um assistant aide had reached out to probably many select boards in the area. Um, they have a meeting coming up with DOT um, Monday. on Monday the 9th and just asked if there was anything that was on our minds. So I reminded, uh, I mentioned to her that we had a meeting on um, November 8th at DOT and kind of discussed the issues that we were talking about there, which were the town common, you know, um, how the DOT owns Sugarloaf Street and our common and Conway Street and that we really sidewalks. want to improve it, the sidewalks, we want to improve all that stuff. Um, and then, uh, so, you know, the town's interested in maybe taking those over if, if the DOT could bring all of that, um, all of that infrastructure up to code, um, that we'd be interested in doing that so we could make improvements to that area. Um, so to kind of continue that, that conversation with them, uh, second item I brought up was the um, North Street Bridge, the uh, North Main Street Bridge, and how that's, I think, on the list of five over 5,000 bridges, I think it's 100 and something. 151. 151 as far as needing replacement in the state. So it's really in dire need. Um, and it was, you know, it, it's our town's fault that it's not on that list. And, you know, I said that, you know, things have changed. We, we, we're, 
you know, respectfully request it to get back on the list. And, you know, and I think the comment that we got from DOT was, well, then please, you know, talk to your legislators and let them know you support and want them to support the governor's uh, bond bill, transportation bond bill. So I mentioned that as well, that we support that and want, you know, want infrastructure in town um, to, be, to be done. And then um, I talked about Richardson's Candy Kitchen up at that end. Um, yeah. And there was, um, and then the, the intersection after you cross the bridge that comes out across Mill Village Road and how that is a dangerous intersection if something in the future is, is put there, then we, we support all of the Did you, um, Cheapside Bridge is not really our bridge, but. I did not mention Cheapside. Okay, so maybe if just, you want to reply back yeah. to her and just kind of add anything that you yeah, want. Yeah, I'll add the Cheapside because we can't, you're not supposed to get a, even a fire truck over that right wow. now. I mean, that's pretty substantial. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know what is that in a plan or is it just are they working on it? They're or? working oh, on okay. it, but it's, yeah, it's dangerous. You no. Know, yep. The, it could get a little boost. I think I don't know if they have enough money to do the whole thing. Right. Um and also did you mention that we wanted um one lane for the Stillwater Bridge? I did not. Okay, so no, I'll I'll put hit that on down. Those two things, that'd be great. Um, I hit the four I could think it, of. It's Stillwater about. Bridge, which is um our bridge, um yes. is on the repair is, is moving forward in the pre-design stage, and um, the state is going to um, repair it for us um, in 2022, I believe, right? I think so. Yeah, it's on, it's on for 2022. However, we're requesting that not it to be just completely shut down, but to just be yes. one lane, mm -hmm. which means it's more expensive. So we kind of are leaning on them, but they not may, so may much not that we to, are going to take over. No, no. <laughs> I worked so hard to get that repair, yeah, but no. this has seriously be been difficult. 12 years of me working to get this listed. But it's and a it's long finally, drive around if you have a fire or something. But it's a terrible or... drive around for people that live there, so including we'll see myself. What they can do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if you want to hit on those things with them, yep. that'd be great. Okay. Uh, that um, it seems like the only thing you missed was Cheapside and Stillwater. Okay. Thank you for doing that. Oh, sure. Yeah. I appreciate that. I was worried that we, I wanted to make sure we got back to her. Yep. Um, we've been and pretty I consistent. Um, I believe, I'm not going to be here um, Friday, but I do believe that maybe, I don't know if you were going to be able to meet with. I was, um, I was going to do meet. Mike yes. Neely. Yep. This is Secretary of Economic Development for yep. the state. And he's going to be here to celebrate um, Yankee Candle's um, opening of the research center at the old elders building and the old candle car museum. They've put a lot of money into that and brought jobs here or kept jobs here or brought jobs here. One of the two of the jobs are here and not down south. So I replied back that I couldn't make it, but I thanked him very much for that. He offered a tour of the place. Um, you know, if I got a chance to get in there, I'd love to see what they've done there. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, um, speaking of Yankee Candle, are you going to be able to go to yes. the December 16th? Yes, I'm going to go 8 a.m. for the town gift. So Yankee Candle every year gives a gift to the town right. and a lot of times the fire department or police. Oh, thank or you. I have a dentist appointment I'll in the go. morning. Yeah, so I, I really appreciate that. Thank them for that gift. So I'd love to be there for that. Well, it's just important that one of us go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're around? I might be around. Oh, be it's at 8 o'clock? 8 o'clock. I got the invitation, but there wasn't any details with it. You just have to RSVP. And they'll huh? tell you. If you RSVP, they'll tell you the details. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think you have to RSVP. Okay. Yep. Well, I will do that. Like the I'm details sure. before I RSVP. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, yeah, it said midnight. I know. <laughs> I know, it was very, it was very nondescript, right? Yeah, sure. They didn't give you a lot of just information. I know. They don't tell you what it is exactly. You just it, show it's up. It's at 8 o'clock. Yeah, and it's at 8 a.m. It's an interesting have the My dentist appointment. And that's for us there. Yes, my dentist appointment is Yeah, they, it's actually mine, one of their buildings. They, they it's at the Chandler. Uh, yeah. It might be where Chandler's used to be. It's one of the auxiliary buildings. Yeah, so it's got to be right there at the end. Okay. So I would make a motion to approve the sewer abatements for December... 4th, 2019. I'll second that. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And then our, um, our last item under new business is the 2020 annual license renewals. Do you need a motion from us? I don't, normally we go through each one of these and, and make sure that they are, um, you know, the 
fire chief has signed off on this stuff and right so right now i just, just i think we just wanted to kind of only? give you an update yeah okay. so we'll have we'll put together the whole packet and a whole list and but basically this is you can see who's who's applied for renewal we we gave you an yep. update on who we haven't received you know for the fire certificates right and then on the back what we have so far but we are missing a few i see we don't have brian atherton as our under class two and right we need to check on a couple other can you um, just make sure this is run by the police department yes sure and I assume yes. Barb would look at it, taxes. And yes, we have stuff. a, yep. right, if they okay. owe taxes or yep. we have that. Yeah. Okay, good. Yep. All right. Um, All right. Do, uh, town administrator's report updates, do you want to hit on anything? I had done, well, I had done the half month um, before I went away, and then That's I went right. away for the holidays. So yep. I wasn't, I haven't really done a okay. lot. I did do the CP, uh, CIPC yep. request today, and I'm sorry that I didn't, you know, you didn't get to see them first, but I did discuss them at length with Trevor and, and a bit with Carolyn no, beforehand. Fine. So hopefully yeah. they're okay, and it's mostly just to get that, just to get dialogue. And then have some meetings for them. Yeah. And then um, we'll have, as you guys know, you're going to have a joint meeting in mm -hmm. two weeks yes. to kind of kick that off. And we talked a little bit about that at CIPC that some but of the Dave department might not know that Dave, oh. we're talking about meeting at five o'clock yeah oh we are on so the, next uh, on the 18th on the 18th yeah, yeah. I heard you say that yeah we okay. had oh, okay. last, yeah, had a last that. meeting yep. I think we talked about That's scheduling right. it so we we have posted it and um, and some departments and, and committees um, may come in you know the library trustees and the library director have asked to come in and kind of give all three boards an update on some library Great. stuff and we may get Christina to come in and you know maybe Good. scams and you know try to get some updates for that. the three boards so you guys can kind of hear as yep. we get into budget season what some operational and you know issues are and things like that good so, good um, and then I did um, copy I, I did get something out to uh, DOT about our discussion that we'd had and I copied yes. and thank you about the last meeting um, yeah. I think that's pretty much Okay. <laughs> did, what, what, what's the story on Oxford? Did we get that out? Oh, so we yeah. have commissioned a surveyor yeah. to start doing the laying out Merrigan Way. So Kevin and I discussed that today with and Trevor. So we, we got to okay. do the layout first. So, so we can do so the plan of land. We've. Do we need yeah. to meet so that we can vote that forward? Because that needs to get posted. It does soon. Um, I mean, I, I don't know how quickly they can survey it. <clears throat> well, you I mean, just we have to let us know, and we'll come. Yeah, in. yeah. I mean, me as soon as we, ASAP. we'll just keep moving it along. I mean, we have to have before we put it out. We kind of have to have the plan of land because right. we have to know. So yep. that's the next step is doing the survey. So we have reached out to uh, Heritage Surveys in Southampton, and they've agreed to. Mark Reed has been working in the town on another project anyway, so he's okay. agreed to do that. We're also gonna, and speaking with yep. Kevin, we're also gonna do some surveying of the um, Leary Law at yep. the same time yes. because we oh, the Leary, the Leary lot. lot because we have some initiatives we want to do in that area as well so we want to get some sense it's, of that it's um we're hoping to um get funded um permanent pavers for under the mvp program they do some some additional parking there and yep. parks rain gardens like yeah we'd yep. love to dress that up right yeah there's some time well just to there. make it more usable of yeah. course yeah, Kevin would like a stronger determination on the back side, the back right. end of the parking lot, like kind of where the parameters are. Mm -hmm. and obviously, ideas and obviously about, that will you know, determine the, you yeah. know, the expense of actually exactly. the parking lot. We would love to have a, well, yeah. we'll talk about it later. But so yeah. Are we going to uh, apply for the grants for the electric charging stations? Yes. Yes, the EVIP grant. So I have all the preliminary things. That's the one thing we do. There is a, a some money discussion that we need to have. So we should put that on the next agenda to make sure we're all on the same page with that for budgeting and. Okay. Um, yeah, because there's. It seems the, okay. the amount seemed kind of high. It was fifty thousand dollars per. Yeah, but that's to lay that's to lay the ground, you know, the cabling or. Whatever. Right. I don't think but our is cost is going to be that day. No, there's, but I'm right. Do, but yes. the grant. It yes, seems that's. Like, you know, yeah, that sounds like, well, that lays up to the 10, you know, connections to, like, there's this whole thing about it has to be expandable. Like, we're only oh. going to have one or two ports now, but it has yeah. to expand up to 10 ports or I something. I see. So if you so, want to add them later, you exactly. can all yeah. set with right. the infrastructure. That's why yeah. you want to, yeah. the infrastructure is there for a, yeah, a much yeah. bigger yes. Yes. project. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, but we are, that is in process as well, yes. Okay. Um, I, I just want us, do you mind just making sure you call 
the surveyors and just check in with them. Oh, sure. Yes, I just yeah. talked to Mark this afternoon, but I will double check and get that. Get you know, yeah. he right. needs to meet with Kevin and get the you know talk to. Right. So that'll be the next step, and I'll make sure they get. Go yeah, on. Right. and then and then yeah. then just call us so that we can post a meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it will only take a couple minutes, but we yeah, need I'm to get that. To do that. We yep. need to get yeah. that out. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't want it to just sit around. I mean, we have definitely have people interested, so yeah, let's let's get constantly. it out there so we can sell the property and turn it around. Yeah. Get some jobs going. Yeah. Yep. Well, and then also just I did do. Um, we are doing the. Um, the Mill Village Road, or excuse me, the, the culvert. So I did mm -hmm. get the combines ad and everything up for time bond for the MVP stuff. Yeah. All that had to get up, and so we did the the advertisement and the recorder and the combines. Okay. Stuff, so. And, and you, have you heard from Zach on the um, how's he doing? Did he get the, the borings on Kelleher Drive done? I did. He was supposed to do it before. I mean, I think it was last Friday. He yeah, was going to be there. I did see something about an update on that, Carolyn, but I don't, I don't know if they've got it done or not. All right, because that, know. you know, you have a um, conflict of interest, or no? Uh, oh, campaign, campaign finance. finance, right? So yeah. Barb, Barb asked me to just make sure that um, that you sign the com the campaign finance uh, report municipal form. If you haven't spent any money, you, you sign. Yeah. If you have, then there's other paperwork to yeah. fill out. So Someone just before sign. you leave tonight, let's okay. make sure we get yep. that done. I don't want to forget that. Just, um, there's so much stuff to do now. Yes, there is. Um, so I don't have anything else other than um, we have an executive session for a couple items. I could yep. move into that if you yep. are ready. So, um, so pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 21B. Oh, oh. excuse me. Yes. Oh, I'd love some public comment. Please come on up. <laughs> Bruce. Thank you. I didn't mean to skip oh, you. No. I was trying to shut you down, but <laughs> this is supposed to be a short meeting. <laughs> no, please. I'd love to hear from you. Good to see you. Snowberry Circle. Uh, there's a couple things I'd like to address. I, you know, one, I, we missed the beginning of the meeting. I assume you uh, acknowledge Kevin's uh, in his crew's work. For his we, did. Oh, we, did. we did. We did. Yep. I did yep. miss that. Yep. But on behalf of part of that is um, it's pretty good in the center of town, but you get from oh, Crestview Drive, Thayer Street, down, the sidewalks are impassable. Mm -hmm. They have been through with the little V plow, and there is anywhere from eight to 10 inches of snow with two tracks run through, and it's not from being plowed over. It's just somebody didn't went through there, and I don't know whether they had their plow in the air or what. Okay. I talked to one individual, and he said he had addressed the, uh, somebody, and he said he got a snotty re re uh, response over it. Okay. I would like to also thank the people that did take their snowblower out and make some of that uh, sidewalk passable down through there. We've started. There is a lot of people walking now, and especially down from our yep. end, that we do have a pretty active community down there uh, that does walking. They have dogs and everything, and well, it's almost impossible. Passable. What, what we what we discussed last meeting, and we're looking at is a town bylaw to have people who own the side, you know, the property in front of their house. Have sidewalk there, clean that. We don't have a bylaw in town. Most other towns do. I did in Greenfield. I had to clean my sidewalk. Right. Um, so, and I know some people are elderly. They don't have that capability. Um, so we're always grateful when people, as you say, get out there with a the snowblower right. and clean that. And and yeah, hopefully we can do a better job of cleaning that up. So well, that's for fine. But it to if, we're, if we're paying somebody to go down through of there, course. it should be done. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's good to know. Yeah. This is the last couple of years have been horrible. Okay. I don't know what happened. They used to use a snowblower, and the, and the sidewalks got done pretty good. But they yeah. started using the V plow, and the V plow is horrible. Yeah. And I don't know what it is, whether it doesn't ride well or what. But anyway. Rocky also brought to my attention there's an area by the Polish Club and Wolfies that gets piled up with snow on the sidewalk itself, and people are parking in the road or, right. you know, or kind of right there. And, and when the kids are walking to school, there is nowhere but the road for them to walk. So, you know, he sent me some pictures. I'm going to talk to Kevin about that. Maybe businesses are piling stuff there, and I know that Kevin's going through it in a little bit to. Next few no, days. This, to clean this up is downtown, all downtown, but Off Street. There is no business understood. there. No, I was just wanting oh. to also tag on to that oh, yeah. snow conversation. The other thing is, of course, is and it's been getting. I've been there again I've, since I retired. I do a lot of walking. It's been getting worse and worse every year. It is maybe you need a reminder for private uh, uh, people that are plowing the driveways 
that they can't leave three feet of snow across the sidewalk, this berm that's high. Yep. It's get, that's getting worse and worse. So you've got to climb up and down the hills every time you cross somebody's driveway. Right. And that's the other thing. When they were using a snowblower, uh, you throw. know, they could aim that, you know, so if people had their driveway done, they didn't end up with this ridge across the driveway that right. they do now. Right. Uh, so okay. that, that's, uh, uh, that's uh, um, anyway, like I say, I do mm -hmm. want to thank those individuals that did come out. Yep. My other complaint is dogs and their waste has become an issue. Uh, I'm seeing more and more poop bags by telephone poles. Mm. Uh, there's a, a matter of fact, there's out in front of the senior center, there's a pile out there. Yep. And it, no matter where you walk, you're seeing more and more of it. Yep. People just are not, you know, they're, they're picking it. it up and then just throwing it, including on our private path on our property. Yep. Uh, you know, there was a bag uh, right at the beach, just before the state property as you walk up the hill where mm -hmm. we have a uh, thing there. And so, it, as well as more and more people using longer leashes, you're allowing their dogs to go all the way up on people's property and do, do their thing under their bushes and everything else. Mm -hmm. I understand the town has a right of way, but not 25 feet of uh, right. that, and that's what the people are doing. Yeah. So those are a couple of, you know, I have been biting my tongue, but you know, I've seen it getting worse. Where, of course, the last couple of days, the snow, the it's dogs obvious aren't going now. out there. Yes. But, uh, it's obvious, but, <laughs> but uh, okay. uh, this, is, this is becoming more of a problem. So it I, is. And it I'm sure you probably they were dumping heard them, that. They were the, dumping them in our town um, trash receptacles on the common, and that was just getting, you know, really, no. it's, it's just not happening. Yes, and I've heard a whole happens. argument about that. And, and, and my, my uh, two cents on that is, you know, these people expect the townspeople, uh, you know, that it's a town service, and it's really not because it's, not. it's being assessed by anybody that uses a dump that has a dump sticker. Right. So they're asking people that are paid the dump stickers, whether they have a dog or not, to pay that service as well. So, no, uh, I, you know, take and it I guess the, and throw it, it away. unless you're going to put it in the tax rate so that everybody's paying for this, all these services that everybody mm -hmm. seems to want. Uh, there really is not a fair way of doing it other yep. people taking care of their own waste. Yep, I agree. So, uh, so uh, anyway, um, that is, um, I guess, my good. Any anyway, accolades I want to us? thank you for doing your job. <laughs> thank uh, you. I you was know, waiting for that. <laughs> <laughs> the best you can with the limited resources you have. I appreciate that. So, and, Good to see you. And happy holidays. Happy holidays, happy holidays, to, holidays you. to you. Thank you for coming, as always. Any other public comment before I shut them down? No. I guess I just would say I would be willing to, um, I can get you some samples of sidewalk clearing policies like for other towns bylaws. I'm familiar with some. And then also, do you have a dog waste bylaw? A lot of towns I have dogs. We, we do. We did. We do. Leash laws we do. We do. Yes. We okay. do. All right, I'll go look at it. Yes, yeah. right. Okay. So let's look so we'll at that. We'll take a look at that. Yep. I mean, we can do yep. some non criminal disposition um, yep. enforcement. Bef before, before we put in the fine, though, we need to have plenty of advertisement that we yep. are going to start fining people because yep. it's not fair to give someone a $250 fine when we certainly haven't really publicized oh, it. For sure. I'm, I'm not saying there isn't a problem, and I'm not saying I don't agree or disagree with the 250 no, we'll but, educate enough but more we that need, it's the right thing to do we need to, to talk about it home. plenty yeah, ahead it would exactly i see it'd be a yep. town meeting uh -huh. so yeah. we should look at that and for next year yep yep so it'll give us some months to look at that okay yeah. sounds good any other comments no, okay, so um, we'll enter into executive session pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 21B, uh, uh, paragraph two, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel, police chief contract, and pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 21A, paragraph six, to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property if the chair declares that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the public body, recreation, general municipal purposes. I do. Um, so I, you want a second? Oh, second. Um, any further questions? Nope. nope. 
All those in favor with a roll call? Dave Wolfram, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Thank you. And we will be um, not coming back to public session, so I hope you all have a great, Thank you. Uh, great night and good couple weeks, and we'll see you soon.